uh, mark your calendars for that. And exciting news that uh, we have an, an ASB All-State board member, Miss Bates, was nominated by this board and was selected by the uh, by AASB and will be recognized at the uh, Winter Conference in December. So we're excited about that. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Stowe. <laughs> so, yeah, we're, we're excited about that. And with that, I recommend approval for the agenda for October 18, 2018. Do you want to remove F? And while I recommend that agenda, I'm going to remove item F, the uh, recommended, the superintendent evaluation. We're going to hold off on that one. Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any question or discussion regarding the agenda? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, I recommend approval of the minutes for September 13th and the 27th of 2018. Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any question or discussion regarding the minutes? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, and we have some informational items with uh, Ms. Carrie Bass and Nancy Curry. Dr. Curry. Or is it Ms. Bass? It's both. Oh, there you are, Dr. Curry. I didn't see you. Hi. 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 These two work really hard with our uh, working with our school improvement plans uh, for each of our schools, and so they're going to go over a little bit of uh, of where we are in that effort. So. It's going to start by really good afternoon, our, but it may be good evening by now. I'm not sure. I haven't looked outside lately. <laughs> Bass and I certainly do appreciate this opportunity to get to speak to you about something that we're very interested in, and those are continuous improvement plans. Now, are continuous improvement plans um, new, brand new? Ms. Stowe's been with us a while, and I bet she knows the answer to that. No, this is not something new, is it? Those are Beginning with the enactment plans. of now, No Child Left Behind in 2001, plans, um, school improvement plans, required so school improvement plans for schools have just been part of an improvement now, process. New, now over the years, our schools have, and our system has dealt with, as other systems have, AYP under No Child Left Behind. We've done SIPs. Those are school improvement plans. We've done CIPs, continuous improvement plans. We've done ECIPs, electronic uh, continuous improvement plans. And now we work with ACIPs, continuous improvement plans, Alabama, on the ASSIST platform. So over the years, now uh, the AYP under No Child Left Behind is gone. That is gone. But our, our school improvement plans and our planning for improvement certainly has not gone away. It has evolved over the years and it continues to evolve, to evolve. So it's not new, but we're kind of excited about something we're going to share with you tonight about the process. I've got to remember to change the slide. Okay. Each school is required annually to do an ACIP or a continuous improvement plan. This is required by the state of Alabama, and now it's under ESSA also that we will be doing this. However, we are moving toward not just looking at the continuous improvement plan as something that we have to do or that we have to check off, but actually using that improvement process, that plan, to ensure that we can um, prepare our students for the world that they're going to be working in uh, in this global economy. There are com required components, as you can see, to the improvement plan, to an improvement plan. All those first, that first row, are uh, components that all schools will complete. The executive summary is like the history or the story of the school. Uh, the stakeholder involvement, how stakeholders are involved in helping to um, plan uh, with the school for improvement, the performance, the student data, that's a part of the plan, the feedback from stakeholders through surveys with parents and students and teachers, of course the assurances done by the, the 
uh, administrator of the school that all of these components are actually done and uh, looked at. Then, of course, what I think are the, me the, the meat of the plan, the goals and the plans, the actions and strategies that are actually going to be implemented by the school to ensure that all of our students are successful as we can help them to be each year um, by going through an improvement process from year to year. The Title I schools then have some additional components there that have to be completed, as you can see, including the family engagement diagnostic and also a comprehensive budget. Get it. So why do schools need to do continuous improvement plans? I think if you look at the first section of, of this slide, you can see the identification of needs. The identification of needs and that deep dive into data are some of the main reasons that the uh, school important, the continuous improvement plans are important and, and should be done each year. If schools really take the time to analyze their data and to dive deeply into it, the schools can recognize areas that are working, areas that need improvement, and maybe even be able to dive into reasons why the improvement is not being made and what can be done to ensure that improvement can be made for our students. Multiple sources of data are looked at, not just the student data, the achievement data, but you can see there also um, the uh, attendance data, the discipline data, and then the survey data, and also so many of our schools are involved in that blue ribbon process that looking at that, the survey data from that too is a, an important part of that identification of needs. The data then, and the looking at the data, analyzing it, drives the development of the plan. The focus here, the really, really important part here, I think, is that statement that says, what will really impact student learning? What can this school, what can our schools really do to help improve student achievement for all of our students? And then that next part, aligning all of our resources in our schools, our physical resources, our financial resources, and any other resource to help us really make an impact on student achievement. But now CIPs, Continuous improvement plans are not like standalone documents. We've worked for several years to, to try to make the CIP be a part of all that we do in schools and all that we're doing in our system. As you can see here, we have the Madison County uh, Strategic Plan, Madison County Schools Strategic Plan. And if you look where the stars are, you can see the connection that CIPs have to this plan. The CIPs are very, very, you know, focused on the academic part of this and focused on what can be done to help our students all be career and college ready and be able to join the workforce. If you look at the next star, it's the student services and the, the CIPs, the schools also focus on the student services to give support to those students who need the extra in academics or the, the area of behavior. Our system, we have a system priority now of professional learning communities. And the focus of, the, of our professional learning communities is to make sure that all of our students are learning at high levels. This is done through building a collaborative culture, a team in schools, by focusing on learning and also focusing on the results. One of the things that we have um, accomplished this year that I'm very proud of is the, ACE, the continuous improvement plans for this year were approved by October the 15th. Almost all the plans included as strategies or as actions in their plans, the professional learning process. Using that process that our system is focusing on as part of their process in developing and implementing their plan. Those four essential questions of the, of the professional learning community were also used in developing the plans. So that gives you just a little bit of background and information 
uh, when I came to the central office in 26, 25, 26, 2005, and 2006, my, one of the main, and has been since then, focuses of support for schools has been working with schools with their school improvement plans. That gives you a little bit of the background, a little bit of where we've been, but now we're going to talk a bit, a bit about the new and better and exciting part about the support that we as a system, as an instructional personnel of this system, are going to offer our schools in this process. Thanks for listening to us talk about this. This is something that I've been really, I have become extraordinarily passionate about and probably talk a little bit way too much about it. My schools probably get a lot tired of me doing that, but it's something that having come fresh out of a school as a building level principal, my perspective has shifted a bit. When we went through um, the accreditation review, uh, they came back and kind of said, hey, you guys are functioning as a system of separate schools. Everybody's kind of doing their own thing, sort of in their own way. And we would rather you look at becoming a more focused school system. And so as we started going through last year, uh, the ACIPS, uh, the instructional department started talking about, you know, what's everybody doing? And we began to monitor them a little bit more than they had been in my experience as a principal uh, from the instructional department level. But as we started to have conversations, we still realized all of our schools are kind of still all over the place. And so this has really been a driving force for us to say, how do we bring everybody into one clear focus? And these ACIPs are really a great um, way for us to do that. We have developed district goals that um, really go to our all means all philosophy. We're saying, hey, all students need to demonstrate an increase in math proficiency, all students need to demonstrate an increase in reading proficiency, and that's for our preschool through eighth grade schools. High schools have a little bit of a different challenge. They're not looking just at that, they're looking at college and career readiness now. So we developed a district goal there for all students will graduate college and career ready. Also, we have what used to be called a culture goal, but really looking at it a little more broadly now, because we know in society as a whole, but also in our schools, there are barriers for these children that are separate from their academic barriers. There are social emotional barriers, attendance, mental health, uh, discipline. And so this allows our schools to have a time to focus on those. So what we did is last spring, we kind of started developing those district goals and rolling it out. So in May, um, we met with the building level administrators and kind of said, we're going to have a new approach to ACIPS from this point forward. We're gonna have these district goals that provide an overarching focus for all of our schools. But the schools then need to really take what Dr. Curry referred to as a deep dive into their data and really look at how they can affect that change of all students achieving. And the way to do that is to set those measurable objectives that are specific to their school. So some schools um, have higher percentages of students who are meeting the state benchmarks than others. So their percent set for growth may be a little bit different uh, and they may look at different things. This is where the schools begin to customize the plan to meet the needs of their students. Um, we also implemented a one pager this year and I hope that your schools will begin to send those to you soon we're encouraging them to share them with the board members and all of their stakeholders. The one pager is a summary of their ACIPs. Ms. Stowe, you may remember back in the day when you would get the 200 page ACIP and they would say, here board members, you're approving these. And this is a one or two page sheet where they've summarized what are their measurable objectives and how are they going to get there? 
They're setting their activities and strategies to focus only on those areas that they believe will increase student achievement. So that's a really exciting thing because when I go in to meet with my schools, I can have that one page. Where are we? How are we doing? Um, and so that's been a, a new and exciting development. Another thing that we've done is we've said, maybe we need to increase our support. I don't know if you guys have ever talked to your principals about it, but creating an ASIP is like a lot of work. <laughs> and I mean, if they were locked in a room with no interruptions and worked solid, it'd be at least 40 hours, at least. It's a lot of work. And they don't get the opportunity to sit locked in a room with no interruptions to do that. So we provided for the Title I schools an ASIP workday. We're going to provide that for all of our administrators next year. Um, and in hopes of them being able to collaborate together, what's working at your school? What are you focusing on? And also for us to be there to support the work. Um, so another change we've had is with you guys allowing the instructional department to kind of be reorganized, it has allowed us to have people who can help the schools. We really didn't have that. I know when I started, we had our directors, but to really have somebody who is sitting down and focusing solely on instruction, and, and we do have that now. So we've got district team members who are going to be supporting the schools through the process of writing and implementing and monitoring uh, those ACIPs. So um, the district team members will meet with their schools three times a year. I meet with all of my Title I schools every month. Um, and, and what we do in those meetings is, how's it going? What's working? What's not working? Where are your needs? What resources do you need? How can I help? We're not there to be evaluative in any sort of a way, but it gives the principals an idea that they're being supported from the district level um, for their student achievement. So this is how the teams have kind of been divided out as far as to read the ACIPs and to attend. So you'll notice that I have just a few of my 11 schools here. I see all my 11 schools, but I've been so fortunate to have Dr. Curry, Jen Taylor, Mr. Perkins, and Liz assist me. So it makes me better at my job because we have experts in middle school and experts at high school who are also there to assist. Um, and additionally, we have, as this has evolved, we brought in the special education department. The resource specialists for special education are sitting in with us and having conversations about that subgroup of kids that sometimes has a difficult time achieving. Um, we also have uh, Pam Carter who helps with our really at risk kids and our attendance kids. Um, and then Laura Snell and Tina Hamlet are there supporting in the areas um, too. So it's really become a team approach and if you think of it from a medical scenario, we no longer have the school principal being an isolated island trying to figure out what's the, what's the prescription that's going to help and how's it going. They've got now a team and we hope that that becomes even better as this evolves. Um, so how do schools implement the process? The big things that the school will do is really look at their data. And I cannot stress enough how important that is. If they take that survey data and they say, hey, I had 15 parents say if we would change this, it would improve our school's climate. And then they can make that change. And guess what? Those parents feel heard. So really looking at that data and, and using it along with the academic data. So once they've identified their measurable objectives, they're going to design a plan and we're going to expect them to align all their resources to make that plan happen. And that's where I felt like when I came in to my job, it was maybe an area of weakness because um, as life happens when you're a building level principal, there's so much going on. You can lose focus and you can have people who are very well intending come into your office and say, hey, I think we should try this or we should do that. 
by really focusing on this plan and saying, hey, all our resources are aligned for our ACIP right now. It, it allows us to measure, is it working? And we're not jumping around from one thing to another. So I'm really excited to see how we're able to move that forward. Just the biggest thing I want you to take away from this is that if you have conversations with your principals, know this is the plan they're working on. They shouldn't be working on anything else. Not that other things aren't happening. I'm certainly not saying that. But I am saying that these plans should give you results. And it's also a way for us to measure accountability. Is what we're doing working? So this is a place for you to know, hey, this is where my schools are at. And this is where we're going. Um, and it's having that focus that's going to make an impact on our outcomes. Um, and monitoring those results. A lot of times when I was an administrator, and I'll be the first to admit it, getting the ACIP done and off of my to-do list <laughs> was incredibly important to me. Uh, but I view it so differently now because the real work is what's in that plan and knowing this is what we need to achieve this year. We need to make 3% growth in this subgroup. We need our African American students to be equal to all students. You know, they're really looking at that subgroup data and saying, how can we make a difference? So our goal from the instructional department is to really look at this each year. How can we make this process better from our perspective? How can we make our support better? How can we make our plans better? And moving forward, that's all that we hope to do. I know that I feel this way, and I feel like it is definitely Mr. Solly's philosophy. We're here to support the schools. Our job is to make them better. And by doing this, I feel like we're finally getting to a place where we can identify needs and we can say this is what we're working on. And it'll help us to know other ways that we can also support them. Um, so our plan is to continue this process. I just think it's just important for you to take away, this is a huge job for your schools. They put a lot of time and effort into it. And it provides that focus. But when you talk to them, support them in that, and, and know that this is the real work of what Madison County Schools does, improving student learning. You know, all the other stuff that happens is a side job. Making a difference for kids is why we're here, and I think this is the way that we do that. So thank you for listening to us, and just when you talk to your schools, ask them how it's going. So thank you. Carrie, where are they in the process? They are complete. Okay. So October 15th is the state deadline for their ACIPs. They have um, completed those. We're going back and asking them to revise their one-pagers one final time to make sure it aligns with what they actually put in their plan. And then we're going to ask them to distribute that to stakeholders. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Curry. Where'd she go? To the back. Oh, it's fun visiting schools and getting to go in, and I'll I'll crash their uh, their meetings with uh, with maybe Dr. Curry or so at a certain school, and I, I try to stay out of the way. But it's uh it's fun listening to discussions that administrators are having about improving student learning. So it's it's been a a, a big task, but a fun one. That everybody's taking on. All right, here we go. I recommend approval of the following bids as attached. Motion. motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any question or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. I recommend approval of the loan request. This is for Monrovia Middle School to attend the Blue Ribbon Schools of Excellence, Excellence Conference. Motion. We have a motion and a second. Is there any question or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And I guess this, uh, you know, I didn't mention this in the thing. That, so Monrovia Middle got awarded the Blue Ribbon School Award. And so it is uh, along with Sparkman and 
Madison County High School, and now we have 18. Mark listed them all off last year. I'm not going to put him on the spot this time. But Which uh, ones do not have blue ribbon? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just no, – no, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> and are, all, are all the schools going down for this? Are all three of those schools going down for this? Oh, yes. Yep. And there'll be an award ceremony. There'll be a conference in the award ceremony on Friday when they get their their big awards banquet there. So uh, if you, you board members want to make it down, that would be a good day if you want to jump down there for a day of the conference on that Friday luncheon. Is that right? All right. Did that get voted and approved? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, I recommend approval of the following contracts for services as attached. Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any question or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, I recommend approval of the following personnel items as submitted. Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any question or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. I recommend approval of the following supplemental contracts as submitted. Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any question or discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 for me. At this point, we will entertain a motion to move into executive session to discuss pending litigation. We have a certificate to do so. Can I ask one question? Are we going to get that safety report at some point? I just got a received part of the report today, and they informed me that by the end of the week we will have the full report. So in November 1st, 15th, I'll have that Okay. We already discussed, I know we're a little out of. We could move to motion to move to the executive session in just a moment. I apologize. Dr. Minsky did bring up earlier um, that there was not a, a great need for a November 1st meeting, and he thought we could probably consolidate that into the November 15th meeting, at which time we would reconfigure and then follow up with uh, the remainder of the meeting if no one has any pending issues or any concerns that that may put us behind in any way, we could always adjourn with an emergency meeting if necessary. Yeah, there's no big issues or anything to present to have to get done on that first. So is everyone okay with canceling November 1st and moving to just having the November 15th meeting? Okay. Anybody else want to say anything or go around the table and make any mention before we entertain a motion to move into executive session? All right. Do we have a motion to move into executive session? So moved. Right. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to move into executive session to discuss pending litigation for which we have a certificate for. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <coughs> We will not vote on anything other than adjourning upon the return from executive session. Y'all are welcome to stay. That's usually a pretty vigorous event. Um, <laughs> but if not, thank you all for joining us.